In this video, we'll cover the basics for working with palettes within Scopebox. When you first launch Scopebox, you'll get a window that looks like this. I'm going to go ahead and add the test pattern source so that we have something to look at. The Scopebox window is made up of these smaller windows. Each of these is called a palette. You'll notice as I click on it to highlight it, different options appear over on the right hand side of the screen. This is how we configure each of the palettes within Scopebox. Because the waveform needs different settings than the vector scope or the preview or the other palettes that are available within the application. As I click to highlight, I get full customization options over in the right hand side of the screen. Each of these palettes can be dragged and rearranged and resized using the control in the lower right corner. I can also close a palette using the X in the upper left corner. I can add a new palette by right-clicking in any of the blank spaces and choosing the palette that I'd like to add. I can also add palettes using the palette menu at the top of the screen. I can make any palette fill the entire screen by right-clicking on it and choosing the solo option. This is going to scale it up to use all of the available space. By right-clicking again and choosing solo, it'll resize to the original location. I can also open any palette in its own window by choosing Open in New Window. This makes it a totally independent window that I can place anywhere on my computer, including on a second monitor. It can be resized, and it can even be made completely full screen. You can still access the palette settings as well using the Show Palette Settings option. When I'm done using this window, all I need to do is close it using the normal control in the upper left corner. Let me go ahead and reopen my preview here. I can have more than one copy of any palette open as well. So for example, I might want to add a second preview window. And in this one, I'm going to set up pretty small, but I'm going to add overlays to help me with framing, title safe, rule of thirds. This way I can keep an eye on framing in my mini preview without distracting myself within my main preview window. Any individual layout can be saved for quick access later on by selecting Save Custom Layout under the View menu. I'll get the option to enter a name for this layout, and then I can really quickly jump back to this with all the settings intact. You can even set one of these layouts as your default within the Scopebox preferences. This way, as soon as you launch Scopebox, you'll have your custom layout. Now, what happens when I add a second source within Scopebox? I'm going to go ahead and add another set of test patterns and watch what happens. I get a set of buttons in the upper right corner of each of my palettes. You'll notice that they have a color which corresponds with the color underneath the source at the top of the screen. And when I click on those buttons, the title bar changes and I'm now monitoring the other source. And this way I can configure my layout so that I have different sources previewed in different palettes or I can toggle between different sources within existing palettes. So I might open a second preview monitoring one source, or I might have one open and just toggle back and forth. So that's a quick overview of working with palettes within Scopebox. All of these options are very customizable. There's a lot of keyboard shortcuts and other ways to work even more quickly within Scopebox. So be sure to check the manual for full details.